No, okay guys we're back let's continue sculpting the head now uh between videos i've actually been looking at this head i mean i really don't like the nose <laughs> so as um a big part of concepting we're going to change a lot of things now let's actually do it like this i'm thinking of giving him a more or less a realistic nose because i don't want to go with uh, the standard skull um skull hole nose thing uh, I just want something a bit more interesting. So let's actually do it like this. Let's move this out first of all. Let's use the move brush. Move this guy out. And now let's get the standard brush. Give them those nostrils. With a low intensity, I'm going to bump this up. Okay, now let's see how this looks. Now it looks good, but I want him to look more like fine. Uh, by fine, I mean um, like his royalty and big nose just makes him look a little bit orcish. So I want him a bit more refined and classy. So a nose will actually say a lot about that. So what we can actually do is either do it too straight or maybe give him some sort of a little line and make the tip a bit sharper and maybe make the nose a bit smaller as well and the skin if it comes down just a bit like that I think that's going to be quite what I'm looking for. Just a little bit of a bulge. Now guys, right now I'm not actually looking at anything. I'm approaching creating this nose exactly like I'm doing with all of this character. Um, we're basically concepting, letting your imagination flow. Whatever you've seen, whatever you know, uh, and basically using it at the, at the same time. Uh, well, along with a bit of reference, but there's uh, I don't really have uh, a nose a nose picture here anywhere i'm just trying to get something out of my head um, that looks and fits on the face itself here let me show you no nose guys <laughs> okay uh, let's actually do okay maximized it beautiful Now let's get the standard brush, make the nose fit a bit more, make these lines look less cartoonish. And I want to fix the jawline as well. Make him look a little bit less sexy.
let's fix the eyes because I always like them to basically the eyelids to wrap around the eye gives you much better and realistic result in the end we don't have enough resolution to actually mess around a lot in here but we have to um, we basically have to control the form anyway Okay, I'm pretty happy with the face at the moment. Uh, if anything, of course, we'll actually change it, but let's not get into too much detail. Because uh, obviously, I want this model to be functional, usable for rigging, animation, uh, rendering, everything. So, since I didn't start from a base mesh, we're going to have to retopologize this and actually finish the model that way. So, let's go on to the body now for the body how will how uh, i mean this is going to be very easy right now because uh, first of all we're going to get in a little bit more resolution here and since we actually have the base done of the major muscles that affect the surface and catch the light and also a little bit of proportions in there uh we're this is going to be quite easy i'm also going to do a little video about proportions just in case uh and you can watch it before you actually attempt doing this devil uh, basically and it's gonna make your life much much easier okay now let's turn off polyframe let's go into geometry go into dynamesh let's do 256 I know this is a high resolution but I'm going to get a more traditional approach to it since we already have the base built so after we do this control drag and let go this will oppress the model and we can go into the clay tubes I love this one basically I'm going to get the uh, yeah round alpha alpha zero one uh, or for this let's actually do it uh, a bit harder or yeah let's get the alpha 12 because i have quite a high resolution and i don't want it to come out too clean from the start i'll show you how to polish uh, after we do this now i'd like to get started from here no specific reason for this i just prefer it to let's change the focal shift that's a little bit and again with brushes as well with different things I'm doing I use different things I usually use three or four brushes um, for these kind of things but let's actually first of all fill this out make sure it's nice and smooth get the little deviations between the chest the pectoral muscles themselves And we know that pectorals are attached to the clavicle. Now what I did is actually turned on lazy mouse to get a smoother result when sculpting. Uh, you can go into stroke. Go into lazy mouse, turn it on. You can also press on L to toggle it on and off. Okay, now I put in the rib cage here for a reason. Uh, what we'll actually do is actually make this area flat because uh, that's uh, the sternum, if I refer to it correctly. Uh, the middle part of 
the actual rib cage itself and let's actually make the rib cage a little bit more apparent and let's let's actually draw some pec abdomen muscles over it now don't worry about asymmetry at the moment let's actually put in the little sketch and make sure everything looks good and functional and after that we can we can worry about the pectoral muscles about uh, the abdomen and everything else now usually people do have a six pack here uh, it's like a little muscle right uh, right over this and a little one right under uh, but usually this is because uh, this is due to either genetics or uh, the actual athlete uh, had the muscle damaged ripped apart and uh, usually you get a six pack and it can even develop into an uh, into an eight pack if the 40 ounce muscle which is in here uh, is uh, overdeveloped and it gives an appearance that it's split into but usually I do a four pack But basically anything that looks realistic and good at the moment is amazing. Let's get everything in. But I think six is going to be really good for this guy. Uh, because I'm planning to give him some sort, let's say up to eight head hero proportions. So his leg legs are going to be nice and long. Uh, I still haven't decided whether I'm going to go with the goat legs directly or maybe a biped. Let's actually do um, test both of them out and see which one looks better. Uh, because again, we're concepting at the moment, but I think uh, both of them are going to look amazing. Depending on how we actually execute and what shapes we're going to get. So let's get there first and debate later. Right now I'm sculpting the deltoid muscles and uh, deltoids actually grow off of... Well, they actually attach to the clavicle in here. You can touch uh, your delts as well, but this is too far in front. Um, we have to put this a little bit back. Get the chromium process. Let's actually draw it out to not make a mistake. Now, these are two heads of the clavicle. Uh, now, this goes straight away up in here somewhere around this area so uh, we can actually get the clay tubes brush again build it off of this because on a developed body uh, the front of the clavicle is usually not visible and you get a little little hole type thing in here and let's do an acromion process as well Let's just do it very rough for the landmark. And sculpt around it.
Okay, perfect. Now, uh, usually, now, usually I leave a two finger width in here. So it's not too close, not too far away and gives you a much more realistic result you would actually see on a real human being. I know this guy is not a human, but you can't get away with that when you're actually uh, grounding his uh, origin and everything else in reality. Let's get a bit of details in there. Let's do a quick render to see how the light goes in there. How cool he can look. What he can actually change. Now what I want is uh, to get the neck areas kind of a little bit deeper for it to be darker in the render itself. So it can catch a little bit more light. Define this more. Okay, now we can actually go in, uh, make the forearms, uh, also finish up with this. And let's actually start the back in the next tutorial. Uh, let's continue with this exactly. Okie dokie, let's actually sculpt uh, the trapezius muscle. Just for a bit, because I like to keep everything quite even. Let's take care of this. 
Now what the trapezius muscle actually has is I drew that scapula line for a reason. Uh, it'll have some sort of a medallion-ish look in here. And of course the seventh cervical vertebrae uh, looks like a little diamond. Let's build up the terrace, terrace major. Uh, we can add the minor one as well, but let's not go into that much detail at the moment. Let's just, let's just add the latissimus dorsi the big muscle on the back. And let's uh, add the oblique muscles as well. Again, just sketching in, not over-defining anything at the moment. Control shift alt to hide green to reveal Again, I may make some mistakes in terms of anatomy in here, 
but uh, overall it should actually look uh, realistic. I'm only I'm not even looking at reference at this stage. I'm simply um, I'm simply in incorporating everything I actually learned over the time uh, of my sculpting career uh, to actually speed the process up and uh, get the model looking to the final shapes as soon as possible so we can spend the time working and worrying about other maybe more or less important things Let's modify the shape a bit, so I don't want him to look like Dwayne Johnson. I still want him to retain that thin but developed look. Maybe with a body fat of 4 or 5%. Now let's see our progress. We came from this to this, let it load, <laughs> in just under 30 minutes. Okay, perfect. Actually, let's add in the forearms in here and we should be done for now. Okay, perfect. Let's uh, get the move brush and move this down. Don't, don't be afraid to curve it, give it shape. We can use the inflate brush to give a little back, maybe not as much. Okay, now we can get rid of this, redynamesh. make it straight and again I'm gonna do the same thing I did with the body and a lower resolution I'm simply going to put in the landmarks uh, we have three heads in here of uh, the actual bones connecting the upper part and lower part of the hand of the arm I'm sorry we have the little spine in here and here now what we can actually do is Give it a bit of shape, make it look more like a forearm. Let's not make it so straight. Uh, let's press in control, get the mask lasso instead of the pen. Smooth, rotate, turn off the gizmo. Select a point and rotate just enough. Okay, looks much better. And we can modify the shape like this. Let's get the difference between the biceps.
Okay. And let's put in the basic arm anatomy and build on top of it. Uh, let's go D and S for the damp stone brush. Right at the end of the deltoid, let's get a smaller one. We're going to get, um, I forgot what this is called. Um, the brachius, I believe. Uh, it's a two-headed muscle right under the bicep itself. Then we get the tricep. With its three heads. Then we have also two heads in here going under, which give you the basic shapes of the forearm itself and identifies this place as forearms. <laughs> okay. Now I don't like the length of the chest itself. Let's add in the nipples as a line mark as well. Okay, we're done for now. Uh, in the next tutorial, I'm going to take a closer look at the proportions, also go through uh, what looks good, what doesn't, modify a few things here and there, and uh, make sure his arms aren't so buff. Um, see you in the next lesson.